In this episode, I'm talking to the undisputed king of Boston comedy, the legendary Lenny Clark. Lenny talks about growing up in Cambridge, getting high, getting low, and being happy. Hear about his all balls, no breaks ride through the business of funny. Buckle up. It's a good one. And I married a redheaded Jewish Playboy model slash cocaine dealer from Birmingham, Alabama. What could go wrong? Um, okay, so I am going to jump right in. Go ahead, man. Listen. You don't scare me. Go ahead. So one of your sisters was dating or engaged to a black guy. Married him. Really? Oh, yeah, yeah. So you heard from him about affirmative action when you were a kid <laughs> and that you could apply to school. I was... Uh, I was the president of my class, freshman, sophomore, junior, and senior in high school. I don't think that's ever been done. And the reason I was, because I had a bar in my locker. And you'd be going by, going to math or chemistry, and hey, man, you look down, you need a shot, you know. And it started as a joke, but people really enjoyed it, and people yeah. depend on it. And uh, when I was the senior class president, they said, we've never had a senior class president not go to college. I go, well, that's me. Go, you, can't, you can't. You can't break the tradition. You got to go. So I applied to University of Hawaii, University of Miami, Arizona, all the party schools, and they all said no. Even Emerson. Well, like, Emerson, you can't get into now. But back then, they took everybody. They should and give it, you like and a, there, a doctorate now. You and and, and there, was, there, the... was, there was no test, nothing. I said, that's the school. So they said no. <clears throat> I was a little bit depressed. But I didn't care because I wasn't going to college. Then I applied to American International College, AIC in Springfield, and I wrote down that I was black, and I got a full ride, <laughs> right, a full ride. So I went home, and my mother goes, Lenny, this is amazing. My father goes, what have you done? You've done something. You don't belong in college. You don't know what my family it, right? I know what I'm, well, I think my sister went to college. But anyway, I never went. So I, did they flush you out? Did anybody figure it out? Well, Say, get, you get, get, get yeah. all summer, you sit in the sun. I went. So my, my mother goes out with me and buys me stuff for my oh. dorm room. And I meet my dorm room guy and he hates me. Now I had a room. So I turned the room into a bar. And uh, he didn't like it. He moved out. So we had a bigger bar. Yeah, and I got like the president of my freshman class. Then I got like the president of my sophomore class. And the black student union called me in to give me a big award. And I go, oh, this isn't going to end well, right? So I go walking out on the stage in this auditorium full of black people. I go, who are you? What are you, the janitor? And I go, no, I'm Lenny Clark. And I go, do you Lenny Clark? And I go, well, the only one I know. And he goes, you're, you're, you're supposed to be black. And I go, I don't know what you're talking about. And he said, well, <clears throat> you're taking away from a deserving black student I go hold on there I said I, I'm a deserving white student I, have, I come from a big family both of my parents are sick you know haven't you ever heard of reverse discrimination which was in Time and Newsweek that week I read it that morning while I was taking a dump and I go eh, not knowing I need it but it worked out great and they said alright if you go away, we won't sue. And I go, hey, we'll Holy call it a push. Shit. So then I went to UMass Boston. And, uh, no, UMass Amherst. I was there for about three weeks before I realized I wasn't enrolled. They threw me out. And then I ended up going to UMass Boston. And it took me like nine years. But I, I graduated with a, uh, a bachelor's of science in political science. So you grew up in Cambridge. Grew up in Cambridge, right? And you grew up in the projects? How's well, you know what? We, I don't know how my father did it. But we moved into this beautiful house uh, in mid-Cambridge. You know, it wasn't called mid-Cambridge till yeah. we moved in. And it was all wealthy people. Everyone had eight kids. My mom and dad. Mom was a school teacher. Dad worked for the Herald. And we what moved. What did dad do at the Herald? He was a linotype operator. Was that? Which, yeah, see, no one even knows. It, they were the guys who used to set the type print before computers. So he had to spell forwards, backwards, and upside down. Greatest speller I ever met in my life. I saw... Me driving him crazy, not intentionally. Yeah. But uh, my father ended up having three nervous breakdowns. So I guess the answer to that question would be yes. But they never, made, they never made us feel like it was our fault. You right. know what I mean? I mean, we we were poor, but we didn't know we were poor. I remember the first time we had uh, steak. It was Salisbury steak, and I'm on the porch going, "Hey, man. <laughs> to all the neighbors, hey man, we're having steak tonight." You know. <laughs> Salisbury steak, you know. Yeah. And, but it was, I remember we used to have uh, veal palm. You know, my mother would make veal palm for us. And, and when I signed my first million dollar contract, I was in Los Angeles and I took my manager and my agents out to dinner at this place Sinatra used to go to. So they said, Do you know what you want? I said, Yeah, give me the veal, veal parmesan. So they brought out this veal chop that looked like something out of a magazine. I go, whoa, what's that? And they go, that is the veal, sir. And I go, no, no, I'm talking about the little, you know, like the patty yeah. with the with the cheese and the sauce. He goes, sir, 
That is imitation veal. We wouldn't serve that to a dog, right? So afterwards, I call my mom. I go, Ma, I go, I, I own a veal pop. They give me this big, like, steak type thing. She goes, Leonard, that was imitation veal. That was like three for a dollar, ten for a dollar. We couldn't afford real veal. It tasted good to you, it though. Was, oh, that's what you wanted, Oh, right? God. Yeah, 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 yeah. So where did you get the ambition? Well, like... It's one thing, you know, everybody has to have a job and everybody's, mm. but you have an ambition in you that's bigger than that. Yeah, you know, uh, no one in my family and no one in our long line of people that have came over here from Ireland, you know, we, uh, no one was in show business, middle class, blue collar working people. And uh, I was, after I got bounced out of AIC and thrown out of UMass Amherst and I was going to school at UMass Boston, I was working as a janitor in City Hall. Now, when we were growing up, the big thing for people like us, you got to get a job in the city. <laughs> if yeah. you got a job yeah, in the city, job, a get a job. city job. You're yeah. set for life. You can't be fired. Well, you said something, not to stop you on it, but no, no, I yeah. actually want to ask you about the city hall stuff. Uh, you said in an interview, it was after Stevie Wright got Carson, mm -hmm. and you were on a panel, and I think you were sitting next to uh, Steve Sweeney, and you went into this rant of like, somebody get me on Carson. Somebody's got to know this guy. Right. Come on, give me, like, help me out here. And at the end of that, you said... I just want to do better than most people. That's all I want. Like, and you had the guts to say that because most people can't admit, oh, especially oh. Could, you know, like Boston. You got to be humble. You can't be too much. And yeah, you well, could say it. Well, you, you know, say, what? I want it, and I'm I, hungry. I always felt that that I was cocky, but I didn't want to be arrogant. Yeah, and and I was honest. I was, it like, didn't come like, off arrogant. Uh, yeah, it came well, off well, honest. Well, like, I, I remember. I remember. I was at Mark's strings. Spring Street Pub in Watertown, and we're watching uh, Steve Wright on the Tonight Show, and the the story behind it is uh, we had just uh, we, we, I was getting a lot of attention, and they they wrote an article in the Los Angeles Times about Boston comedy, and they mentioned me on, it. and we got a call one day from the Tonight Show, and Shun Lee, who ran the Ding Ho, said Lenny Lenny uh, the Tonight Show on the phone. I said, yeah. I said, well, this is Peter LaSalle. I'm executive producer of Tonight Show. Now, my son is going to college. We're going to be coming through Boston looking at colleges. And we, we think you'd be great for a show. We'd like to have a showcase of the best people you think that would be good on the Tonight Show. So that's why I turned it over to my brother, Mike, because he's the brains. I'm the brand. But he picked everyone. And he said, what do you think about Steve Wright? Now, Steve Wright was new. And he was so talented, even from the, from the first day I saw him. But he was petrified and he would go on stage and turn his back to the crowd right. and i would go up and turn around and go look at these and people in the room and yeah, he was yeah, like yeah yeah, yeah 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 and and i didn't realize he had that stuff where you don't like to be touched <laughs> i'm manhandling the poor kid right <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah 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 but he was brilliant so that night we're doing the show right comes on and right just blows the room away i mean really blows the room away i realize i'm not going to get it so i just go off on a rant that's you know, from so you said you actually said Carson can suck my dick in the set. Well, you said pretty, something pretty much, yeah. Did yeah. you do it because you thought, okay, I'm not going to get this and fuck it, or you thought it was genius and they're going to no. see what big balls no, they have and they're no, going to think it's never thought it was genius. No, no, no. I I realized I realized it wasn't working, you know. And I was trying to be clean, yeah. you know. And the crowd was going, yeah, you're a little off tonight, line, you know. What I mean? But do you yeah. think you sabotaged it because you couldn't accept if you tried 100 percent and failed on it? Uh, like was it and not even knowing it but just like you that's a great you question blew it up yourself you know I, I did blow it up I did yeah. I blew it up myself I, I've always wanted to do cast and show but I, 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 you know I've, did I've, you do that with other big things like when it was your moment no you would, no 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 well yeah yeah I did I, I but I not intentionally right I screwed up I've screwed up a couple times but total mistake you like know before the before the auditions before the sets were you what was in your head? I'm going to get this and I'm going to nail it. Oh, yeah. I always I, listen to me. I've been doing it 42 years now. And people say, do you still get nervous? I go, yeah, I get nervous every show, no matter what it is, because I still care. You know, I, I anybody who comes out to see me and pays down a good hard earned money to pay to see me, I want to give them the best show that I, that I can give them. Yeah. You know, I mean, I don't care who it is because, hey, thank you for coming in. You know, now I, I know hundreds of guys funny to me. I'm insane. I, I use my insanity to carve a little niche in a career out of it, you know? Like I said, I was in Mark String Seaport and we watched uh, a, a replay of Stephen Wright on The Tonight Show and I said, yeah, man, I'm blowing. He said, what's the matter? I go, well, you know what? 
I just, I just thought me. it was my. T- it should be me. I thought it was my time. He goes, "What are you, the only funny guy in the world?" And I went, "No." And the moment he said that, from that moment on, I never felt like I should have been first. I deserved it. I always, say, if someone makes me laugh, I just enjoy it. Yeah. If they don't make me laugh and they and they make millions of dollars, I go, "That ain't right." <laughs> but did you get that like, oh, "This is bullshit"? They, you know, they don't really know what's funny. They oh no, no, no. I, I knew. I, it, it was up to me to decide what to do and to do the right thing at the right time for the show because Pete LaSalle said to me at the end, he goes, you're very, very funny. He goes, you're not right for our show, but you're very, very funny. I said, thank you, Mr. LaSalle. And what I did was I wrote them a letter. I wrote Peter Salle a letter saying, thank you so much for coming and take a look at us. And when you pick Stephen Wright, you obviously pick the very best we have to offer because he's terrific and he's a great guy. And he showed Stephen Wright that letter at a party. Mm-hmm. I think at Carson's house, you know. I, I met Johnny Carson once. I got as close to him as I am to you. I, we had taken Teddy Bergeron to do the Tonight Show for the second time. And I walked around. And he said, can we help you? No, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. I got this close to Carson. He's backstage, ready to go and smoke on a butt. And he looked at me in the eyes like, you step one step closer, I'll have you shot. It was the only time I ever backed off from meeting someone. I've met three, four presidents. I was friends with Tip O'Neill. I met people, you know, CEOs, captains of industry, but he was the only guy with a look alone intimidated me enough to back off. So what was the uh, the industry side of him? Like they say that he drank a lot, he had a real dark side. He oh, was, blow everything. Yeah, he yeah. was, you know, but hey, he, he was the best at what he did, you know, and he was a money maker for the for the NBC. You know, yeah. look what he did. I mean, it wasn't Letterman like that? Like you couldn't talk to him before the show or something. Uh, you yeah. know what? I've been on Letterman's show. No, I mean, I hadn't. I never did the show, but I was there. Yeah, on three different occasions. Uh, two of them with Sam Kennison, and you were, no, he didn't come up and talk to me. And Sam was Sam walked in <laughs> with a couple of stewardesses. Flight attendants were from Delta at the time. We could him. he get girls anywhere just because he was a good time rock star? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, he he surrounded himself with porno stars. Right. I mean, like it, it was incredible. But uh, was it really fun? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I, there was a dark side to it, but it was insane. I mean, yeah. it was there, there were times I I just. I couldn't believe, you know. Well, I mean, I, you know, sometimes you hang out with wild people and it's like, I got to get off this ride. Like, I can't. Oh, oh, I could. I well, could've. you were right in the front seat. I, oh, I, yeah, yeah. I was driving most nights. <laughs> I, uh, but it was, uh, you, you, well, you know, you saw what happened. You know, he, he died. You know, you can't. I never thought he'd die. I never thought. When they said, Lenny, Sam's dead, I said, have you seen the body? Because to me, he was, he wasn't human. He was like, he was a force of nature that I've never seen before or after. I mean, it's just, you know, it was incredible. You know? Yeah. And um, who are your favorite, if you, growing up or just through your life, like who have you seen comic-wise that you think? George Carlin, Richard Pryor, Rodney Dangerfield, Kennison, uh, Robin. Dangerfield, to me, he's one of the greatest ever. I mean, Don Rickles is probably my, oh, I, he's just, there's some, that ballsiness of oh, he impressive. Was, but, uh, Dangerfield, a lot of his jokes, he would be that guy that would keep that set and just take it all. Or, but it live, would he improv? Would he just throw wild shit out there? Or would he stick to his like one well, liner punch? Well, line? well, you know what? Uh, it, it seemed like that because that was successful. I, I remember one night he told me, "A kid is like stringing pearls together. You know, this one goes here, this one goes there. It, he could do anything. You know, I mean, he could he could go off and." Uh, uh, he could improv with the best of them. I mean, right. but he he was totally, you know, focused on what he was doing. You know, his set was like you see him with Carson. It was just incredible. You know, yeah, it's yeah, unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he would just blow the room up. Oh, yeah, one yeah. After another, yeah. After another. And the way that he had his jokes, they were all just jokes. Yeah, you know, well, it was. Well, I I got to be incredible. He gave me my first big break, and I got to be incredibly close to him. And you would go to New York and go to Danger. Yes. How did you meet yeah. him? How did you get connected to him? He was auditioning for uh, an HBO special called Nothing Goes Right. And he was on both coasts. 
and it was near the end of the audition process and he was coming out of the comedy store and my brother Mike said, go, go ask him. So I went, I said, excuse me, Rodney, look, I'm a, I'm a comedian that, you know, I'm doing all right, but I never got, never got a big break. Yeah. Cause you take a look at me, he's, oh kid, I've seen, I've seen 14 other people. I can't do it, man. I gotta I got go home. I've had it. I said, okay, man. And he walked away and then he, it was like that commercial with me and Joe Green where he takes this sweater and he throws it to the kid. He goes, he said, hey, if you can be in New York on Monday, I'll take a look at you. And without saying my brother Mike goes, we'll be there. And I go, yeah. well, we're, so we're in L.A. We fly back to Boston. We get a bag uh, of clothes. And we, we, we <laughs> get on the train. Home, probably, and right? we, get, we get on the train and we take the train down to uh, New York City. And on the way down, my brother Mike says, do you, do you know what you're going to do? I say, I have no idea. He goes, ah, oh, you'll be perfect. So we went in. Supposed to be between me and Bill Hicks. He had already made the lineup. It was Don Myrera, uh, Robert Schimmel. He was amazing. Uh, Barry Sobel, Carol Leifa, Dice Clay. Um, Did you like Dice? Yeah, well, yeah, I liked as a guy. I liked Dice very much. We, we've, we've always got along. I've seen him from the beginning, you know. Yeah. And I mean, I, I opened for him at Nassau Coliseum, like eighteen thousand people, yeah. twenty thousand people. It was well, the day the laughter died. I mean, he just went up there. And set it just right in danger feels like yeah. a small crowd kicking people out, people yeah. yelling back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He he seems like an I don't give a fuck kind of guy. Yeah, he doesn't. Yeah, he, he and it, truly and, genuine as a, a fuck. good to his kids. I mean, he's, you know, I mean, hey, he, he was good to me. But is he, is he an asshole? Like, it wasn't to me. Yeah. You know, he's always been good to me. You know, I, I only judge people on how they treat me. Right. You know, what I mean, unless it's a real. Yeah. <laughs> but no, he was he was always good to me. I went on tour with him. You know, and uh, we had a parting ways because the money wasn't right. You know, no, he was the big star. I understand that, but you know, throw me a bone. Come on, man. You know what I mean? I'm doing. I'm doing. Well, there was a thing on Stern with Artie Lang, and yeah. he complained that like he wasn't getting paid for the gigs with Dice, and I wonder if that was a thing with him. Maybe. But, you know what? I, I listen. There was Who plenty. Knows? There was plenty of money to go around, and I and I wasn't. I I felt I deserved more than what I was getting. That's yeah. all. And that's and listen. He he paid me what he told me he paid me. He didn't screw me at all. I mean, he said I I accepted the deal. Yeah. You know, and and if I didn't want the oh, deal, I could. Blowing up and uh, oh man, know, oh she was be a generous, be a good oh, guy. That's that's all I was looking for. Just a little more taste. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, you had a show, so you had the famous Ding Ho show, and they right. made the movie when Stand Up Stood Out. Right. Which is a great movie. If anybody right. hasn't seen it, you got to watch it. Uh, I think it might be on Netflix, but it's definitely on Amazon or uh, YouTube, and. Then you got a show on TV 38. Oh, my like God. Like a local oh comedy God. show. Oh, God, yeah. That was unbelievable. How old were you when you got that? You know what? I, I have no idea. See, here's the whole thing. Um, the, the, the thing about when stand-up stood out, John Henry asked me to come to the ballpark one night because he had a friend that wanted to meet me. And I'll, I'll make an incredibly long story short. But he, at the third inning, he said, Lenny, this is my friend who wants to meet you, Steve Martin. Steve Martin, Lenny Clark, and I went, oh, my God, because I saw Steve Martin at the Heinz Convention Center like 20 years ago, 20, yeah. 25 years Wild ago. Wild crazy guy. Oh, yeah. yeah. And he blew me away. I go, wow. You know what I mean? I, I couldn't believe how great he was. And he said, I love that that movie with Stan. So you're, you're incredible. Fantastic, I'm saying. Tell my wife. Tell my wife how great I am. <laughs> and it was just. Put, put the uh, loudspeaker yeah, button yeah, down. Yeah. yeah. Oh, my God. He it was And he was such a job. He's so classy. You know what I mean? I. I met him in passing a few times, but it was like an odd opening. And once we was at the comedy store to, to get Sam to be in the Three Amigos, you know, it was pretty wild. But uh, TV 38, Lenny Clark, Monster Movie Spectacular. Uh, I hosted Monster Movies. Okay. And they came in and they saw me. They were, hey, you ever want to do TV? And I go, that's all I want to do. Yeah. So they gave me the show. How old were you then? When they oh, well, let's put it this way. Yeah, it'd be early twenties, twenty five, twenty. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, 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 yeah. Probably about that time. And uh, I would go on, and there was no time limit to the show, because we'd go on after the Red Sox game, after the Bruins game. We'd just go. And it was live. Well, so some you, of it was live, okay. but but a lot of it was. Tape. And you would cut to skits, so you would have the crew, like the Ding Ho crew, do their bits. Or if what? they'd show up, <laughs> if I mean, I I said, look, man, I got a TV show. Who wants to be on? Everyone, yeah, oh yeah, you weren't the Lenny Clark then. No, I was, like, was just breaking. I was I was I was breaking. I was breaking in, yeah. and I loved it. And I mean, we, I had this. Uh, Where are those tapes now? Were, uh, I, I, you know, I have I have a few of them, you know, but I think but on those, those big, the reels, right? Well, I gave 
a lot of that stuff from when stand-up stood out came from the TV 38 or people uh, Harvard, Harvard University did a documentary on me yeah. like 35 years ago. You know, it, it was, it, it, they, they won student award. It was crazy. Yeah. And then there were people from other colleges coming in. They said, can we tape? I go, yeah. Steve Martin says to me, what was the most uh, interesting thing to you about that movie? And I go, the fact that people were taping it. I didn't realize yeah. that I was, because I was high. You know, I mean, I, you know, first it was a couple of beers, and it was grass, and it was coke. I mean, and I, I didn't realize, you know, I'd be high, and I'd be on stage, and I'd be just going like crazy. And uh, when I eventually got clean and sober, I, I had a terrible stage fright. I, I, and I said, where is this coming from? I mean, I've been doing this. because yeah, you were fucked up. Yeah, yeah. And I yeah. went, oh, my God. So I remember the first show I did sober was at the Hot Tin Roof, Amata's Vineyard. And they, they called me on the phone. Where are you? Where are you? Supposed to, we're going on in a minute. I go, in five minutes, start to introduce me. And I pulled into the, and I walked out. I got out of car, walked on stage. There he is, Lenny Clark. And there was no time to panic. And I got a first couple of laughs. I go, okay, I can do this. I can do this. And then, but it was it was petrifying. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, do you still have any of the bumper stickers? Fuck the Kennedys. <laughs> vote for Lenny. Clark? You know what? I, I tell you what. I would. I'd pay a thousand dollars for one. I was yeah, looking yeah, desperately yeah, yeah. on eBay. I made. Or I, I, you know what? It was like. It was. A well, what about this? Would you ever make more for like a fundraiser or something? Oh, of course. Or do a T-shirt, a oh, bumper sticker. I, you know, I have, no, fun, I, right? have no, I have no, I have no, I have no problem with that. I mean, so the real question though is, you ran for what city council? No, okay. While I was being a janitor in city hall, put myself through college. People would say, "Oh man, you're right. You should run for mayor." And I didn't realize they were kidding. Yeah. You know. So in Cambridge. We run on a proportional representation. It's the only place in America and one place in France that does this. So there were 36 candidates, and you vote for all 36. The top nine elect the mayor. I figured if I could fool the whole city, eight other people wouldn't be a problem. So I said, let's bypass this, and let's run for mayor. Yeah. And, I mean, it, the, the few um, debates I did, I kicked ass because I was funny, and then these people. You could all, speak. I could speak, and I didn't care. I was, yeah. you know, and I was just becoming a comedian. I was just starting to make a name for myself, and they told me, if you do this and you don't win, you, we're going to punish you. They, yeah. uh, I, they brought me into the uh, city manager's office. Well, and wasn't said, your your thing like uh, I'm going to clean up city hall? I'm going. I'm going to help you. you the I'm going to. I'm going <laughs> to. I'm gonna help help the elderly and clean up City Hall. I lost the election, but I kept my word. And I, I, I met. But well, after I lost, uh, I right away I went to Vegas. I yeah. grabbed the girl. And we went to Vegas. Spent a couple of days in Vegas. I came back and I didn't have my job anymore. Now I have. I, I was cleaning out the inside of garbage trucks. You know, you, you know, yeah, we have with hose and butt. I go, yeah. I'm going. Wow. I go. Hey, man, this sucks. I want my old job back. And he go, no. And I go. I'll never run again. And they go, okay, you can have your job. <laughs> so then I went back right. to being a janitor. I'll pay you to leave kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah. yeah. I said, okay. Wow. I, you know, I learned my lesson. And, you know, I didn't do bad. Out of 36, I came in like 17th, you know, which is a bad. Well, you know? this is the thing that I was going to ask. So you made it into a joke with the fuck, the Kennedys and all that yeah, stuff. And yeah. you stole a bus at one Oh, well, yeah. And I was giving out clock bars. You know, uh, you know. Uh, but part of you was the janitor at at City Hall, and you were looking at all these suits saying, I'm I'm just as smart as you. I'm just as good as you. Well, I, I was. I, could I, you I, not take it seriously enough? Like, you had to make it a joke? Well, I... The joke you know, was... The joke down, was what I... You really did want it, right? I, I did want it. I really did want it. I wanted to help people. I wanted to be a politician in the vein of Tip O'Neill. Right. You know, all politicians local. And if you needed something, you call him. I mean, I... For instance... My dad, uh, my dad, my dad was my hero. Eight kids, he worked his ass. I had three nervous breakdowns, and I'm and my mother was a strong, strong woman, really funny. I got my comedy from her. But I came home one day, and she was crying, and I never saw my mother cry. I said, "Mom, what's the matter?" She says, "Well, your uh, your father's insurance has run out, and it's a three year wait to get him into the veterans home, and his side of the family will take will pay for everything because they had money, but they want to give him shock treatment." 
He doesn't need shock treatment, Lynn. He just needs rest. He's not He's not mentally ill. He's tired. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. He's got eight kids. How am I going to feed eight kids? You know, how am I going to pay for those? It, it, it worked, and he worked. He worked jobs like, he worked like four jobs. I mean, he had, his job was at the Herald, but then he, like, uh, was a janitor in all these apartments. Would you see that in him? Like, he would just go into funks? Yeah. And he wouldn't talk? Yeah, wouldn't, yeah. He, was he, like... But he hit you guys growing up? No, he he, hit, he he beat my ass once, but I deserved it. Right, so he and wasn't like an ass. Oh, no, no. As a matter of fact, he, he he felt so bad. He was holding me. I said, nah, yeah. I deserved it, you know. I mean, it was pretty crazy. I mean, I was a nut, you know. And my dad, I, I, I love my dad, you know. And I'd rather have him hit me. Then, then give me the silent treatment. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know. But, but he, no, he was, he wasn't a violent guy at all. But yeah, one time I, I answered my mother back and he kicked my ass, and I deserved it. Yeah. I never answered my mother back again. You know, I didn't realize it was hurting her feelings either. But did he, you like your parents? Or did, oh, I loved them. You like? Oh, I loved them. I'm not gonna grow up and be you. Oh, well, well, I was worried. Uh, that's that's an interesting question. I was worried that I may have the depression that my father went through, you know. And I go, I, I didn't want to I didn't want to be like that. You yeah. know? And my mother said, No, no. <laughs> you have, you have the genes you have are from my side of the family. <laughs> Don't I, worry. Yeah, 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 yeah. But but yeah. I but I adored my dad. Oh my yeah. God. I, I love my father. Well but yeah. you know when you had um you know, the weight stuff and the drug stuff and all yeah. that, that's that's depression. Oh, yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. Well, a, my mother would say, Leonard, why do you drink? And I said, because I'm depressed. She says, booze is a depression, you goddamn fool. That's why you're depressed. You know? yeah. And then and she, I remember her saying, now, you're in show business now. You know, don't do pills. You know, a lot of people are going to try and give you, uh, a lot of people are going to try and give you drugs. I go, my, they don't give them to you. They sell them to you. you know? <laughs> but don't do pills. So I never did pills. Yeah. But I was I was snorting heroin. I was snorting heroin. <laughs> I was doing blow, uh, you know, smoking it, uh, drinking it. I mean, well, what ne were you trying never booted. to feel? Like, what was the... Well, I, I was just, I mean... I would say, because I've had a little bit of this myself, where, like, you come from, you know, you grow up kind of, just working class, poor, yep. you don't have money. Yep. And you have this ideal of, I'm going to be successful, I'm going to make it. But the higher up the ladder you get, the further the drop. You know, oh. You're looking down, oh. and it's like half of your brain wants to go up, and half of your brain is afraid to fall down. Oh, so like, my, my fall was... you running from the my fall? fall or? Never saw the fall coming. Right. Never saw it coming. I mean, when I got the show Lenny on CBS, uh, signed my first million dollar contract, uh, had all sorts of money coming. Every time the, f I had three phones in my house, three phone lines, long before cell phones. And every time that phone rang, it was like another $50,000 thing. We'll fly in, we'll put you up in. So we ended up buying a $3.2 million home uh, in, in Marina del Rey, overlooking the canals, the ocean. And I mean, I had I had servants. I had a meat truck coming to deliver meat to my house. And this was after you were hanging with Kinnison? And no, this so you was, were already in that scene I, a little bit? or Well, like how'd you get into the whole LA Hollywood scene? I I moved. Oh, that's that's incredible. My Playboy model wife, you know, the Jewish girl from. How'd you meet her? I was on the road in uh, Alabama, and you know, beef, Alabama. Yeah, Alabama, man. And I married a redheaded Jewish, a redheaded Jewish Playboy model slash cocaine dealer from Birmingham, Alabama. What could go wrong? Well, had she already been in Playboy when you met her? Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you yeah, were the yeah. hot stud coming through town. Oh man, shining star. Oh, she was. She, 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 she stole my eye. Yeah, Did you get laid the first uh, night. Uh, I don't. I don't know if that's a rude. Question. No, no, it's not rude at all. No, I'm pretty sure I did, but I was high. You know, I, I know that I was high. Yeah, and and I, you know, but was I, it one of those like you stick together like magnets and you don't unstick, or you know, you would you keep in it, contact? And it was. It was just. Did she jump on the tour bus and? No, she, we, we, she, my mother used to say. Because well, you weren't staying in Birmingham. No, no, no. I was only there for five days, five, right. six days. My mother used to say to me, let it, love them and leave them, but don't leave them with my number. <laughs> <laughs> so, he's landing it, you know. So, well, anyway, she ended up coming and moving up here. Okay. Came up with a you truck for this shit. You met her at the whirlwind. Whirlwind. Like, I'm well, coming and you said, yeah, bring it yeah, on. Yeah, sure. And then we had, we had the. I, I, I'm living in one of my buddy's apartments in Harvard Square, and then. Uh, and was it good or was it like tumultuous? It, it was, sounds tumultuous. It was, well, it was good in the sense that uh, you know it was a lot of blow and it was a lot of sex and yeah. you know, so that, that, it was that, a good time. Yeah, it was a good time. Did she go to the clubs with you when you were doing? She would come uh, most times, and then 
then you know it's like anything else. You you, you go see someone, and that's enough. You know. Yeah. 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 Um, but would she get jealous about? Oh, you're out too late, or you this? Or no, she was cool about that. Yeah. She was cool about that. Yeah, yeah. Because she, she, she knew I was I was coming home. Yeah. You know, I mean, I'm, I got a Playboy model, but with a bag well, of blow. A lot of chicks, that's a tough thing. You know, you're out, you're she, out there in the club. She, you know, yeah. Oh yeah. Oh god. Time. Oh yeah. I mean, but she had no. Yeah. She she had no problem with that. She was cool about that. And she wanted you to go to LA. She demanded I go to LA. Right. She said she wanted the life yeah, back. Yeah, she's you. She's you're never gonna go farther than where you are right now. She's granted you're at the top of the game, but you're never gonna go farther if you stay. You got to go to LA. So she was one of those, the women that build you up. Yeah, man. You. She pushed. She was she, pushy. She. I give it so up. She, she was smart. She was. Uh, oh, she was a, a bright girl. You know, yeah. I mean, uh, what? Well, they're, they're very smart. Very, very. Yeah, 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 yeah. She knew what she wanted. And, uh, and not, you know, we, we, we've we've made amends. You know, I don't hate her now. You know, yeah. when when we get divorced, uh, it was more financial pain than it was emotional pain. Yeah, because I I were know it was over. over. Was I, she over it though, or was her heart? No, part? no, I don't know. She was. As a matter of fact, when we went to the divorce attorney, uh, she, you know, it was like we got eight grand a month. You know. To leave her and this and that in the house and all this to to keep her in the lifestyle she's been accustomed to, and she came for money. Yeah. And she goes, "I'm only doing this to fuck you, Len." I go, "If you fuck me like that when we're married, we'd still be together." Yeah. So it was a it was a, a vicious divorce. I got I got wiped out. Oh man, it was a lot of money. Yeah. And uh, and then you know I I got I got over as I got clean. That's and so, when you still had the show. No, the show. All right. So she wanted me to go to. Uh, LA, this is incredible. So we get in her, I buy her a car, right? I buy her a Ford Fiero, tiny little car, right? And she calls up, has all this stuff put in storage. And then we drive out to LA. So we make it in like three days. Yeah. And uh, we get an apartment in the Marina Del Rey, a nice a, a studio apartment. Right? And we get there Wednesday, Friday at seven o'clock in the morning, I got to be on a flight back to Boston. Because I wasn't working in L.A. Yeah, I had a break in L.A. The, the, people knew of me, but they didn't see me. And Mitzi Short, thank God, got arrested. So she finally... Was she cool? I mean, you hear Mitzi, her name Mitzi forever. Was, but. Mitzi was very, very good to me. Mitzi Shaw was incredibly nice to me. I mean, she she made me dance yeah. like a monkey on a hot plate before I finally broke in. But she she respected the fact that I wouldn't quit. Was she from the East Coast? I, yeah, just the way that it sounds about you know her. what I, that I really don't know, you know she, I think uh, her and her, they may have, for some reason I want to say New York because yeah. she was sharp right like oh, she, Mitzi would was, be oh, cutting, she would be Mitzi Mitzi was if you if Mitzi wanted to make you a star she could yeah she had that power right. I mean she could call the networks and say come on and take a look at this this one's special you know what I mean look all people she broke as stars you know but uh I went out there and I couldn't get on. And I asked some of the people that I had helped along the way. Yeah. Oh, we don't do that out here, bro. And I'm going, oh, you better sleep with one eye open. Fuck you're pretty, yeah, yeah, right, right. So now I would fly home, 7 o'clock flight out of LAX, Friday morning, land to Boston at around 4, 4.30, be met by a couple of drug dealers who's got the best blow. Then I would go to Stitches and I would do uh, maybe two shows at Stitches and then uh, – Got high all and night. Who, was, who else was in the, the club scene then? I went on one night. It was uh, Robin Williams, Sam Kennison, Eddie Murphy. Wow. Uh, Arsenio Hall, uh, George Miller. Um, fuck, uh, you know, Did you feel like, I can hit with these guys. I'm just as good. I'm, or do you feel a little intimidated? Like, whoa, listen, there are levels to listen, this whole thing. Listen, yeah. You had to go up knowing you were going to hit a home run. Right. Oh, yeah. You know, do or die. Are you as good as you think you are? Sure. And that and that made you better because you couldn't you couldn't lie down. I mean, you, but you have ego. You oh, have I, like in I, a good way, you have confidence I, and ego. I, I, so were you like, I'm gonna? F you think you're funny? I'm gonna show you guys I, how it's I, done. I went on after Eddie Murphy. I go, geez, I didn't. Eddie Murphy is that something? I didn't even know he was black. You know, yeah. <laughs> and then uh, I mean, I was that, the head of my black uh, student uh, union yeah, back yeah, in college. Yeah, yeah, right, bro. Well, <laughs> hey, bro, it was funny. <laughs> I was really popular with the with the black pack. Yeah, Arsenio, uh, the the Wayans brothers, 
uh, Eddie Murphy. Uh, they, they, they took a liking to me because they knew I was nuts. Right. And, I mean, they introduced me to Mike Tyson the, the, the two weeks after he won the championship. Oh, wow. Like, yeah, man, the youngest world, heavyweight champion of the world. I, 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 I ended up later doing a TV show with Mike. You know, he, I, But it was great. I got along the... Uh, the, the black comedians were very, very good to me. And so they, everything's they, good. You're loving L.A. Um, well, I hate L.A., but I'm liking what's happening career-wise. But I'm ba going back and forth, L.A. to Boston, every weekend for 18 months. Right. So I'm making money back here, and then going back out there and paying the bills. Is it tough to be in Boston and be like king of the island? You know, you're everything, and then you got to go back to L.A., and it's like you're one of the other. Get back in line. Back yeah. in the line. So what's the value for a comedian? Because it's all about, like, the clubs and going around the country and tour thing. But why do you need to be in those clubs? I mean, I guess back then that was the only way to get seen, right? Like The club, yeah. Yeah, there was no there was no social media. There was no right. Facebook. There was no uh, YouTube. I mean, you, you had to. And you had to work the clubs to get the experience, to make you a better act, and to keep you from being just a Boston comic. Right, because you had to learn you what's learn, funny in yeah, LA. Yeah, yeah, you had to learn what's funny in Kentucky. All different parts of the country, and I did them all. You don't have to work the road now. There are kids. On their phones. There were kids on their phones that are. That, that, this that, is what I'm saying. Your social media game <laughs> is not the strongest. I no, think. no. And you know what? Do it, you it, want it to be? Do you not care? Is it kind of like. I've done this for 42 years and, and like I'm an old I'm an old dog now I, I understand that and uh, it's just more social media more chance for me to say something that I can't take back are you worried about that these no, days oh every time I get on stage I'm really? worried yeah yeah because they can really get you listen if I was a young kid coming up now doing I would be the biggest star they ever saw because I wouldn't give a shit. I would say whatever I want. Right. You got nothing you know? to lose. No. You yeah. know what I mean? These are words. They're wor Look at how far we've come. Now we have Indigenous Peoples Day. I didn't even know that one that existed. Yeah. And I'm all for Indigenous people. I don't know who they are, but I'm sure I'd like them. Right. You know what I mean? There's, and the, 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 the transgender bathrooms. I, I went to one transgender bathroom and I went to the other one to make sure they're all transgender. Yeah. You know what I mean? I was just down in North Carolina shooting a movie, and they lost a lot of work because of that bathroom bill. You know, people, oh, hey, look, go, uh, go to the bathroom wherever you want. In California, they just shit in the street. But why do we all have to absorb that and accept it and agree with it? Because if you don't, you're a bigot, you're a racist, you're a maggot, you're a... What, what happened? What, when did we become the, the, the enemy? Yeah. What, what, right. Look, a lot of us are just working, trying to make. Do I have anything against transgenders? No. You, God love you. Do whatever I you want. I found out you can't even say the word tranny. Oh, well, now I learned. Thank no, God I did. supposed to say trans. Oh. Uh, I said, it's like Jim, Jimmy. What, what's wrong with trans? <laughs> oh, I. Oh, and, yeah. there, are, there is a list of words now where uh, you can't even say them. And it's not shit, piss, yeah. George Collins. It's not George Collins 7. His words don't even make the list. You can do those now. That's acceptable. But it's the like tranny tr evidently and 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 and, and like the, the the gay stuff. Hey man, get I, I got to so. tell you a quick LA story. Go ahead. So I was out there for work and I was I had split. I was already divorced, so I was on Tinder and I meet this girl. Start talking back and forth. She starts sending me pictures. She got lingerie, she's hot, the whole thing. So I'm at work. I'm talking to this kid that I work with, Mike, and Mike's gay. I said, look at the pictures. He goes, I don't know. Are you sure about this? I said, she's not a hooker. I already asked. Don't even worry about it, right? That's great. He goes, no, no. I think it could be a guy. I said, what? 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 Get out of here. I said, no, she's Asian. It, uh, it's different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He goes, all right, whatever. So I meet her at the hotel. Now, like, my radar's on. Sure. Are up. I can't tell in the light. So right. I said, why don't we go down to the room? You know, talk, be quiet. Yeah. We go in the room. And I know if I kiss her or whatever, I've crossed the line. You can't go back <laughs> over the line. So I, I come up with this idea. I said, you know, rock, paper, scissors? I said, let's play that for who takes their clothes off first. <laughs> so Very good. I win the first game. She takes off her earrings. Oh. I lose five in a row. I'm in my underwear. Right. I said, Fuck this. This is stupid. I don't want to play anymore. Huh. So now I'm like, I just got to ask you. I was like, do you, do you have a dick? And she's like, no. Her face changes. She looks a little like. She's offended. And I said. Um, have you ever? Said, no, no. And I said, I'm going to need you to prove it. So she pulls her pants down. No dick. Pussy. 
He said, all right, Dad, spread it open. So, <laughs> so she lays on the bed, she spreads it. And then I, I was a little drunk, but I took my phone out and I Googled uh, tranny vagina. Right. Not knowing you have to say trans. I didn't know back then. Oh, God. And I hold it up and I'm like comparing. And I said, I'm going to be honest with you. I said, based on the vagina, you're legit, 100%. But this one looks pretty legit, too, and I, I just can't risk it, so I'm going to need you to leave. <laughs> she fucking jumps up. She goes, what are you, a fucking pussy expert now? How many have you even seen? You look like a little boy. And I go, uh, I don't know, count strip club, 300, 400, I don't know. And <laughs> oh, my God. She goes, go fuck yourself, blah, 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 and leaves the room. So that was my... Yeah. Hey, well, I tell you what, man. You know. the tip, it was like a lady... It was like woman boobs with man nipples, if that makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> what do they call them? Lady boys. No, lady, lady nipples with man boobs. Lady I don't know. Boy. I don't know. But anyways, the yeah. line was not crossed. The line remains uncrossed. I tell you what, I, I, I'm, I, I'm definitely afraid if I did that, the person would have a bigger dick than me. And you see how I said person? That's how, that's how yes. much I've grown. Yeah. Hey, I man, took I, some heat for that. Oh, People my. That. You're going to take heat for this? Asshole for you're gonna, hey, that was a pretty amazing story. I'll share I, it another I, time. No, no, that, if people yeah. missed it, will you? Uh, if you missed that, wow. I've been I've been on eggshells trying not to say F or any of them. What can we do? We can do whatever we want. We can say whatever we yeah, want. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, obviously, <laughs> with your last story, which was killer, man. So um, you seem to have a little bit of a thing with authority. Like, you know, you would smoke joints on stage. Oh, yeah. All that. I did blow on stage one night. I said, it's okay. It's stunt coke. But this all goes back to... Uh, even City Hall where it's like you have to like author like fuck you authority you know like you're not smarter than me you're not better than me well, you, you still have like a fuck you attitude kind of uh, not that fuck you but like uh, yeah no no no, no but it, it, never it, play that big bad it, card it's, on it's, me it's, it, it, it's, it's interesting that you, you mention that because I remember and it wasn't like listen I I I respect the, the 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 people who hold the keys, you know. I mean, the 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 bosses and stuff. Well, I mean, now, yeah, but well, me, but me. me back then, like I appreciate the fact that I had a job and I mean, but but don't look down on me because there was a woman. Uh, she looked just like Elizabeth Warren. Came into the city hall one night and said, "Excuse me, janitor boy." You know, right away. I don't like you, you know. Um, and I'm, I'm wearing a ring of about 300 keys. I had a key to room. Yeah. Could you let me in this room? I looked at I said, I'm sorry. I don't have the key to that room. Because, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, listen, I, I was a janitor, yeah. And, hey, and she, Elizabeth Warren stole your uh, get into college. Uh, oh, discount my game. God. Yeah, now you don't have to pay, right? Oh, my God. Free everything. Why are we paying for anything? Do you go into the show like, Okay, I got it. I'm 100% confident. I'm going to no. do this. No! Is, is the back... I'm going to fuck this up. I don't. No. I, I've seen... I, I knew other people that had shows. Uh, and I go, man, you know, if they can do it, I can do this. And the one thing was, I went in for the auditions for the people to play my father. And... Uh, there was a guy by the name of E. Emmett Walsh. He's just an amazing actor. Oh, my God, he's terrific. Everything he's ever done. And he nailed the audition. I mean, he was perfect. And then this other guy came in, and he was a little bit off. You know, he, he made a couple of mistakes. He says, can I start again? He said, yeah, yeah, start again. And then when it was done, they went out, and this, the whole, all the studio I said, who do you want? I want, I want the second guy. And they go, he was, he was a little bit off. And I go, that's what my father was like. My father, he reminds me of what my father would be. And I, ju he just had a warm, his name was, uh, Eugene Roach. And he, uh, he, he was, oh, it taught me everything I know about acting. And he's, he couldn't believe that I picked him. He goes, y is this some sick joke? And I go, no, man. I go, it turns out he was my father's favorite actor. He did, wow. he used to do commercial. He had, he had, he had 11 that? kids and he, he, he was famous for doing Ajax dishwashing detergent. He put all his kids through college there, and he was the nicest man. He was another guy who said, Lenny, if you if you quit drinking, you know, you, you, your career will take off. He was just really, really good to me. So this is a joke uh, from the show. Okay. This is from one of the episodes. It says, I didn't go to college, so I never learned skills like how to steal money from poor people. <laughs> so that's funny, right? That's a great that's joke. That's a great joke. But there's a real, like, there's something really in that. You yeah. Know, there's a real like societal thing there of rich people stealing money from poor people, how you feel that way. Did that like conflict with executives? Were they, did they no, get it? Did they no. understand where you were coming they, from? They, 
they loved the show. Uh, the president of CBS at the time was a guy named Jeff Sagansky, and he was from Wellesley, and he was amazing. And he canceled the show after about, I guess we did 17 episodes. And a year later, I think it was a Wall Street Journal, one of those papers, he said, my biggest regret is that I canceled Lenny. Uh, we were the biggest hit CBS had since All in the Family. We were monster hit. It was unbelievable. But we were, you know, it, the Gulf War broke out. And then when they brought us back, they gave us a different night. And then we were... Uh, we were suspended for the World Series, and they brought us back another different. Did they night. give you pressure on like uh, we want we wanted to, more of this, Lenny, less of that kind of? Did they give you a lot of notes? Did they give you a lot of like? Oh, there were notes. Oh God, yes, more notes than you ever imagined. The people who were running my show were uh, Whit Thomas, and they, they they had the Golden Girls, Empty Nest, a few other shows that were all on the at the same time, yeah. and they they were the they were the group that made NBC much watch TV, that, I mean, they were incredible. And uh, I had never acted before. And Sagansky goes, no, no, we're, the show's gonna be called Lenny, we're gonna do it with Thomas, and, uh, and that's it. So uh, I met a guy named Don Rio, he was working for with Thomas at the time, and he met me in the uh, LAX airport for an hour and 20 minutes, and three days later we had a 76 page script. Now, for 22 minutes, the script's usually maybe 44 pages. We almost doubled because I talked so fast. Yeah. And they knew they couldn't slow me down. And they wanted to keep it real. And they wanted to keep it like it was. So uh, Terry Hughes is the director. He did all the Golden Girls and, and Emptiness and stuff. He goes, all right, well, don't memorize your lines. Don't memorize your lines. Uh, and then we'll rehearse tomorrow. So we rehearse, rehearse. So Wednesday, he goes, okay, tomorrow we should be off book. And I go, off book, Terry, what are you talking about? He goes, oh, that's right, Lenny, you're not an actor. The book is the script. And I go, you mean, as well, I mean, you told me not to memorize it. Well, not then. And I go, now, now I have 76 pages. Lenny, you know, from yeah. the beginning. Of, so, I mean, I go home and I say to my wife at the time, I say, hey, help me run line. She goes, I told you, I don't want to get involved with this. I can't do this. I go, I mean, so I went down to this little uh, beach in the marina, right behind uh, the uh, Cheesecake Factory. And there's these big, like, Baseball lights, like Trump Field lights. Are, and I went and I started reading and reading and reading. And I'm reading every page because I'm on almost every page. And I have dialogue with every other person in the cast because it's Lenny. So I finally go from start to finish, 76 pages. And I do it. And I hear behind me, I turn around, there's a homeless woman going, that's the best one you did yet. I swear to God. So now I, I grab my shit. I go home. Oh, I wake funny. up the next day. I go to work. That night when we shot the pilot, I lost seven pounds of sweat. So wow. I sweat so much. They had to go through four different costume changes. I was a wreck. Was it hard for you, like, keeping that pace and that? Yeah. Because you were living the life of, like, sleep probably till noon. Yeah, yeah. You know. A party all night. Hit, hit the club. Yeah. Oh, party, God. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I took I took this break. I took this as the biggest break of my life, which yeah. it was. And uh, the money was insane money. I mean, more than I would have asked for, you know. Was, was that a, almost a negative? Like, was it too much? Did Could you wrap your head around? No. It was perfect. It was perfect. And the show was perfect. Yeah. And the fact that I had... Eugene Roach playing my dad, and it had me under his wing. And, and one, he would, he would, if I ever got nervous, he would pull me aside. And my mother was played by Alice Strumman, an incredible New York theater actor. Was your mom okay with that? Was my she? mom loved her. Yeah. Oh, my mom loved her. They would write each other. And, oh. Yeah, it was so. It was really good. And Alice, they were just fantastic. So everything. I had a brother who would not come to work some days to get uh, Peter Dobson, who was. Fabulous actor, and uh, he just was nuts. Was your brother Mike out there with you? No, Mike wasn't out there with me. Mike, but he was kind of your guy, like your manager. Well, was he your it, manager? No, he wasn't at the time. If Mike was managing me, I'd still have all that money. Did you I, have something with him then, like a follow? Mm -hmm. No, 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 no. It was just like, well, I went from working in the clubs to a network TV show. Yeah, you know, Mike. Mike uh, is is a self made man. He was he was working at Polaroid. And got laid off of Polaroid and ended up taking right, over the Ding Ho yeah. and, and handling all those comedians and turning the Ding Ho into a gold mine. Five shows a night sometimes, you know, between two in the back, three in the front. It was, he was brilliant. And he's but my, so why, why didn't he go to L.A. with you? Well, he's got a wife and kids. He had, he, he had a... It was a million. I mean, uh, it's yeah. not to, you know, but no. it just seems like if, if you guys had that relationship in place... We both felt that at that point in my career, 
we should go with established people. So one of the one of the themes of the show was was really like money and how working people kind of deal with money. Like one of the episodes, uh, you took a loan out to pay for your dad's surgery, yeah. and you knew that if he knew that you had taken out the loan, he, he would have died before he took the money. Exactly, exactly. I mean, this sounds real to what your life really was. Well, when my dad, uh, when my dad got ill for the, pretty much the last time, he didn't he didn't leave the house. He had the agoraphobia. Is that what we yeah, don't leave yeah, the house? Agoraphobia. So he didn't leave the house. And one day he fell, and my mother called me and said, Lenny, your, your, your father fell, and I want him to go to the hospital. My dad went, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine. So I went over and said, Dad, Mom says you're going to the hospital, you're going to the hospital. And my dad was a little guy. I picked him up, I got up and put him in my truck, and we're driving through Howard Square, and he goes, wow, when did they build that? You know, he'd been, I hadn't been out since seven years. Yeah. So all things were different. So we got to the hospital, and he said, uh, all right, Mr. Clark, I want you to pee in a cup. And he goes, hey, pee in a cup for me. I said, what? He said, oh, yeah, I'm too nervous. I can't pee in a cup. I'm a wreck. I haven't been out of the house in seven years. Now these guys want me to pee. Just pee in a goddamn cup. Yeah. So I pee in the cup. And we get the results back. There's like four different drugs, cocaine, you know, uh, meth. I mean, all sorts of shit. They go, must have been a bad test. But in, in, in the TV show, they decided to put that in the TV show. It's just... Piss in a cup. I said, why? I said, because I said, I had a few drinks. I fell down. They'll, they'll, they'll tell me I can't drink anymore, and I don't want to go through. Just piss in a goddamn cup. And it was fantastic. So a lot of the stuff in the show, Lenny, was based on my real yeah. life. My no, I could see that. Could we, had the, we, had the, we had the black wedding scene when my, my sister married the black guy. We had the wedding. And on this side with the blacks, on this side with the whites. So it was very funny. And my brother-in-law, Clarence, he, 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 I asked him. Is this cool? You're cool with yeah. this? He goes, yeah, because it was funny. Funny is funny. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, right. Uh, another episode you had, uh, your buddy or your cousin was going to, his scheme was he was going to work at a sperm uh, bank for horses. So he could my steal brother. the thoroughbred uh, the sperm. Yeah, sperm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My brother Eddie. Oh, he was great. This kid, you know. Uh, but when I heard that, yeah. I said, he was sitting at the bar with his buddies, and that was a real scheme. Somebody cooked real scheme. Yes. 100%. Yes, it was. Yeah, 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 oh, yeah. that's a Boston scheme. <laughs> yeah. My God. I mean, it was insane, you know. And the, the network loved it. The network yeah. the network loved all that. Well, because Don Rio had, had such uh, success prior to that. He was a mash. I mean, he was a writer. For, I mean, he, his writing is incredible. He did Blossom. He did Blossom while he was doing Lenny. I mean, Blossom... I never liked the show, but it was a major hit. Yeah. You know, Blossom goes to France. Blossom goes to Hawaii. I'm going, can I go with Blossom? You know? So who owns, so CBS still owns all the... CBS the owns, right? CBS owns, owns everything about Lenny. And with Tom... Would they ever do anything? Would they, would they, would they put it on Netflix? Would they put it... Because it's a Listen to show, me, I you know? can't even find Lenny on... Uh, uh, YouTube, Amazon. Or Amazon. Uh, uh, for I know it's tough. For you to folks, find you stuff. folks are uh, listening, and I know some of you are millennial geniuses with your ticky ticky ticky. Check it out. You you, you can't find it. I, I wish you did. You know, I'd, I'd pay if you did. But so quick, we're gonna do a rundown on comedians. Okay. And you just give me, you know, if you have a light with a lightning. Bill, Bill Burr. Fantastic, fantastic, good guy too. Could you see the talent in him when he was a kid? Yeah, but I saw him get better. And better. Did he, would he have his? Did he have his whole like angry aggressive? Did no. He go into that confidence. No, 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 no. I he, that that happened. I I I, really, I firmly believe. I, he'll probably tell you the truth. I don't know how he feels about it. But after that, the the thing in Philadelphia yeah. where he was having a rough night and he just he ate the crowd up. Yeah. Oh, by the way, I'm selling video. From that moment on, he never looked back. I mean, I think that propelled. But he was always talented. But. Uh, he wasn't the angry guy. He was. He was. He was a comic. You know, but what he's doing now is. Fa he roasted me at the David Ortiz roast when I wasn't supposed to be roasted, <laughs> and, and I've never been. He eviscerated me. Yeah. I went over to him. I said that was like cutting like of a surgeon, and he goes, "You're cool." And I go, "Billy, it was funny. Yeah. It was hilarious." Is that a tough line to play? Like how you can uh, kind of chirp on somebody and. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, some guys take it the wrong way. Right? Oh, yeah. Plus, if you're someone doing that to someone who doesn't like you or something, you know. Yeah. But I, I love Billy Burr. He's a great guy. And and when Kevin Knox was 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 near the end, Billy Burr drove up from New York and donated thousands and thousands of dollars just just to help out. Yeah. And didn't want anyone to know about it. I mean, this was all. 
he was just being a great guy. I said, oh, he's, he's the real deal. He's a good kid. Uh, do you ever, Jay Leno? Oh, Jay. He was a Boston guy. Jay was a Boston guy, but he, he was, was gone long before any of us started doing comedy in Boston. Is there like I, a legend of Jay Leno around at all? No, no, no. We all knew he was from Boston, but that yeah. was it. And he was a fantastic stand-up, and really, I mean... He, I opened for him. We, he took me on a tour with him. It was the Leno and Clark expedition. Did he ever show love to uh, like Boston guys? Uh, Any loyalty there. Of- well, you know, I mean, he was really good to Dane Cook, yeah. but I think that was when Dane was at his height. It may have, but I had to threaten him to get on a Tonight Show, and I and I finally got on. But um, you know, he as far as his stand up, one of the best there ever was. Bar none. Everyone, everyone will tell you that. he was a great stand up. Uh, Nick DiPaolo. Oh, <laughs> outrageous. Love him. I mean, he's outrageous. I can't believe that he is not a giant, giant star because that's how good he is. I mean, yeah, yeah he's just incredible. Yeah, and he was always that way? Did always he? that way. I did a show with him. We were at a, a comedy festival. We were up in uh Ottawa, I think. I think that's where the uh, the capital of Canada uh, with yeah, yeah, yeah the yeah, power of the capitals, yeah. And he was on stage, and I, it was a smoke filled room. This was years ago. And I, it, it was like Lenny Bruce. He was like Lenny Bruce. That's it's the closest to Lenny Bruce I ever saw. It was brilliant. Oh my God, yeah. Um, Louis C.K. Oh God. Oh man. Was Louis. he on the radar at all? Louis, because he really like moved to New York and yeah, uh, yeah, he exploded. But from when he York. was in Boston, was he? He was good. He was good. Louis was Louis. Uh, I remember Louis liked to drive fast. I liked that brother. Uh, but I saw him right from the beginning, and uh, I knew he, I knew he was going to be good. I didn't know he was going to be. He doesn't strike me as though like a. Uh, one of the guys, crew, real. Well, well, the 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 thing about that is, you you you're the crew with the guys that you come up with, that you work with every single night. Right. We had already been doing it, you know. Louis Louis was probably I, I I know Louis was I don't know. But never who, in a million years you could have guessed who what he would become. Oh no, he but should. no, you can't guess that with anybody. Right? No, yeah. no, 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 I couldn't. You know, I I I knew he was good. He made me laugh. And he was probably, I didn't know he was going to be. Yeah. Ja- I mean, if they didn't, if they didn't get him on this, this, you know, I mean, but look, he didn't touch anyone. He touched himself. That was the whole problem, right? You I know? don't think it's outrageous. Yeah, yeah. And, and he had a movie. He had a movie that I was looking forward to see it coming out. He talks out. about it. His first Stern show. He says he went and got a, a blowjob from a, a, you know, crackhead. Or like, yeah. what's what's he hiding? Yeah. You know. Yeah. He's a big. I don't understand. I don't. Either, but whatever. But, um, Mark Maron. Mark, I knew Mark from back here, and Mark's done really well for himself. Was he in the mix back then, doing the blow with you guys? Oh yeah. I mean, he talks pretty openly about it. Yeah, yeah. Mark, Mark was doing the blow, but he was trying to stop. I remember that. I got to stop this. I go, okay. Yeah. (laughs) Get out of the way. Uh, But but then he 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 went out and he kept. I guess he was about to give up, and he started doing the podcast yeah. from his garage. And then look at what happened, you know. Yeah. Now he's on the glow, you Have know. Have you been on the, uh, what the fuck? Have you been on the No, podcast? no. I, he asked me to yeah, be. Yeah, you got to go on there. But I, I couldn't because he, he came to Boston. He was going to do it in Boston, but I, I was doing something else. I yeah, couldn't yeah. do it. But I like Mark. Mark's you end up here with me. I'm, hey. Great choice, Len. That's all right, brother. <laughs> I'm out. Do I seem like I want to be here? Yeah. yeah all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. Patrice O'Neill? Oh, yeah. Shit, Patrice. My good God almighty. Patri- my brother, my... <laughs> Patrice went long one night. And uh, Patrice said, what do you think? He said, what do I think? I think you need a watch. And, <laughs> and, and funny line, right? And then uh, uh, there, there was like a little hot, but it, it, it all blew over. And we all became good friends. Yeah. Uh, but and I, I, I oh, no, why did he have that like a little bit of a, no no he's just going along oh, fuck you, yeah, I'm you. going along I'll do whatever I want you, know? right, yeah. you can't do that when you've got a, especially when you're dealing with a bunch of good guys who are all good yeah. everyone's good you know what I mean and, they, and some nights uh, some nights you hit a homer the next night you, you get a double but that, and then someone else gets home so you've got to be conscious of the other people working around you yeah. and it, it, it i think it probably helped him because he became a better and better com- very funny bastard jesus i didn't know his mom nice lady um rogan rogan you talked a little bit about rogan rogan i tell you what i knew rogan was going to be good the first the first night i saw him because i was la- he did something about fucking madonna and he asked it at a table during the thanksgiving dinner i went <laughs> <laughs> i mean the picture he painted because yeah. he was 
uh, Rogan's comedy, uh, you, uh, he's like painted a picture. Yeah. And I and I'm seeing the picture. I'm I'm getting it. You know what I mean? Because like, not everyone gets me. You know, and 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 if they don't. Sometimes you tend to get angry with me, yeah. but I mean, look, I'm not for everybody. I understand that, but that's why Heinz makes 57 varieties. Right. Pick what you like. Rogan, I like. I, he makes me laugh. Yeah, and he yeah. had that real because that's the thing. Boston has like a ruthless. It's in your face. Oh, it doesn't curb anything. Oh, oh, and and he's someone you don't want to fuck with, Joe. You know, and I didn't even know that. I liked him before that, but wow. I mean, I've seen him do things like, man, he's he's. He's he's not human. He's a, yeah. he's an animal, you know. A can great great guy, nice as can be. Don't cross him. He had asked me to do it years ago, and I said, "The fuck's a podcast? I don't even know." Yeah. And then Mike and him were talking, and then it worked out good. And I'm gonna go back again when I'm out in LA doing the. Uh, it was one of my favorite interviews. If you haven't listened to uh, uh, Lenny Clark on Joe Rogan uh, podcast, it's one of the best. Oh, uh, I it was. Really, thank you. Stories thank you. you tell, oh, the yeah. stuff you oh, talk oh about. Oh my god, you know. Um, I, I've watched it three or four times. Oh, thank you, man. Thanks. Exactly. I appreciate that. Well, this is going to be right up there. Yeah. You ask me questions that that I've never I've never been asked. You know, and people always say, "Why don't you write a book?" And I say, "I got to wait for a few more people to die." But there are stories that I can't tell yet that are pretty crazy. Like, I mean, like being in like Studio Fifty Four at the Palladium when we were in there. Oh my God, the stuff that went just crazy. All right. Well, uh, that's it for me. Is there Jason, anything you want to say that you want to? Let people know about or anything. Well, I got to tell you to to all the people that, uh, but you know, I, I don't look at anybody as like fans because I can't believe that I have fans. It's just if someone likes what I do and they come to see me, I appreciate it more than they know, and that's why I really do try. I want to give you the best show I can give you, and you know, who knows when the last one's going to be. But thank you. It's been fun being with Jason, and uh, I hope you follow his show because he's a great guy. Thank you. The old Dirty Boston Radio Show. Oh, and one thing I have to clarify: this is a, a big deal i worked with a guy you ever there's something called dirty old boston okay yeah he has a facebook page and it's a really popular facebook page and i went to him and i said listen let me help you let me work with you i want to do something and we did it and i put up a lot of my own money i put up about thirty thousand bucks holy shit yeah. i built him a website i yeah. did merchandise for him i bought all his books right he sold all his rights to his publisher and all this shit right and um you know, he turned around on me and he said, I, I don't want to be talking about sex. I don't want to be talking about... Because the deal was I could do the podcast. Right. That was it. Right. And uh, I don't want to talk about this. I don't want you talking about that. And I said, look, man, like, it's old dirty boss. I got to, you know, I don't want to be able to do what I want. So he made a big fuss about it. And he's been saying a lot of negative shit about me doing this, saying I ripped him off. And I said, look, man, you never had a podcast. I didn't rip anything off. Right. right. And I bought his publishing rights from his publisher. Right. So I can do the merchandise and all that. And I do the podcast. I called it Old Dirty Boston to kind of fuck with him. He's yeah. dirty old, but I was like, if you want to be an asshole, I'll be an asshole. And we, so, but I want to clear the air for people because people don't know that story. And if they only hear him right. saying I ripped him off and I cheated him. He didn't rip him off. I have he didn't everything. shit. We have papers. It we was have... just like, you know, you see what I'm doing. Like, I'm just trying to do good, honest interviews here. And Let me help you. I'll get you a good Jew lawyer. Right. <laughs> and I love the Jews. I'm friends. Of, I married a Jew. I can say that. I, I was it. Uh, the <laughs> there you go. Right? Get a good Jew lawyer. We'll be fine. <laughs> listen, you people, listen to this kid. He's fantastic. And the other guy, get a life. For Jesus Christ. Thank you. You're welcome.